What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video, we're going to be doing a preview of Junkyard Joe issue number one. This is part of the Geigerverse, brought to you by Image Comics and Mad Ghost. The creators, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Colorist is Brad Anderson. The first time that we had seen Junkyard Joe inside the Geigerverse, it was in the pages, I believe, Geiger issue number six. That's when we got to see him going against Geiger. Now, throughout the other comics, there were like little cartoonish comic strips that were focused on Junkyard Joe. But the first time we got to see him as the real deal individual going against Geiger was in issue number six. This is his origin story. And like I said, this is a preview, which means we're not going to be covering the entire comic because it doesn't come out until October 5th. These guys were kind enough to send me over the review copy. Now, later on, we're definitely going to cover everything going on with this comic. That is, of course, after it has already hit the shelves. Also, make sure that you stay all the way through to the end of the video. We're going to talk about the timeline and where this fits in to the overall Geigerverse. I'm also going to be highlighting a bunch of the other cover variants because they are absolutely phenomenal. And if all of this is not enough, this comic is going to benefiting veterans. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, you have liked this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, this is chapter 1. This is the origin story of Junkyard Joe. I want to start off by saying a huge thank you to Brian Cunningham, the editor of this comic. He dropped it into my email email letting me read it a month before it actually comes out and I gotta tell you guys it is absolutely phenomenal now you guys know I've been a huge fan of Geiger and when I heard that we were opening up the Geigerverse, we have individuals like Redcoat, The Northerner, Junkyard Joe. They are all getting their own solo series. I would love some more Geiger-specific comics, but this is a great stand-in until we get that. But this story is starting us in the year 1972. We are at the end of the Vietnam War. The war is still fully ongoing. For these soldiers, they only wanted one thing to be done with this war and go home. This is what every soldier wants. When you sit there in that battlefield, you wait day in and day out, hoping that this day is not the day you die. Hoping that just maybe, maybe I can make it through this and get back to those I love. As the helicopter comes in, we have a brand new recruit who is jumping onto the battlefield. An individual that doesn't seem to talk very much. He is being signed to his new platoon. The ones referred to as Junkyard Dogs. The story gives us the narration of Muddy. Believing that he wanted to get home more than anybody else because he was waiting for his beloved. Beloved. They were to be married as soon as he was done with this war. She was everything to him. And so as all the soldiers, they sit here, they BS, they do their mail call, which is one of the most important aspects of being in war is mail call day. That's when you get the letters, the care packages, something that we take for granted when we're not in war. But to a soldier, these are everything. Getting interrupted because Sarge would like to have a talk with them all. As our new recruit is being introduced to Sarge, he's kind of not happy that they got the new guy also known as FNG, telling everybody that they need to fall in. They have their next mission. And while Muddy tries to have a conversation with our new guy, our new guy is the strong silent type. Everyone believing that he's just scared. This is his first day on the battlefield. His first day in a war zone. But they pack up, they grab their ammunition, and they head out. As they go over their maps in the middle of the night, they appear that they might be just a little bit lost. The squad sitting here arguing over whose fault it may be. But while all of them argue, our new guy, he is standing guard. He is looking for any enemy combatants. A lot of the guys finding it a little bit weird that the new guy is so quiet. While they are talking amongst themselves, the soldier known as Band-Aid, he has a bullet rip right through his freaking face. This is when Sarge tells everybody to take cover. 
as the rounds start coming in, we see the new guy. He starts opening fire, shooting into the jungle. He takes down the enemy combatant. As he takes this guy down, we see another VC come out of hiding, wielding a grenade in hand. This is a suicide bomber. He goes charging at the squad, only for the new guy to drop his weapon and charge right back at him, grabbing hold of him and tackling him down to the ground. The grenade detonates. With its detonation, the squad looks in disbelief. Because the new guy, he stands up, no longer having skin, his robotic skeleton exposed. At this point, our squad, they have no freaking idea what to think of this guy. Clinking his way back over to the land, currently in a rice paddy, he makes his way over to Band-Aid's gear, pulling out the extra clothes that Band-Aid had had, no longer needing it. We see him put this stuff on, his name tag saying Joseph. He picks up his rifle, and he is ready for battle. Looking relatively unscathed from this battle. Of course, aside from losing all of the fake synthetic skin that was all over his skeleton body. The squad not knowing if he is a friendly, not knowing exactly what this guy is up to. He doesn't appear to be hostile, not really sure where he came from, what his orders actually said, because the Sarge didn't take the time to actually look at his orders. The only thing they do know is that this guy saved their lives, robot or not, with the Sarge letting them know that what side do you guys want him to be on? The truth is, we all saw what he is capable of. As it stands, he doesn't look like he is violent. It doesn't look like he is violent towards us. And so as long as he is on our side, pray to the gods that we have something like him. As it stands, the mission is still the mission. And so they gear up and they head out. And that will be the end of this preview. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, if this is a story that so far you have enjoyed, be sure to go to the comic book shop on October 5th. You can also pick it up digitally. There is a black and white version as well. There are tons of different variant covers. Like I said, all of this is going to help supporting veterans. So not only can you get a freaking awesome comic out of it, but you're also doing it for a good cause. And there is a lot more to issue number one. You know, being a veteran, being an infantry soldier myself, I love these kind of stories. This one was absolutely phenomenal. I really do enjoy Junkyard Joe. He is a very interesting character, one that doesn't even say anything. He has no dialogue whatsoever, but they have done such a good job of creating and writing Junkyard Joe. But by the end of this comic, I can feel what he is feeling. I understand what he is going through. The truth is, war is hell. And they have done an amazing job of being able to capture that. Now, when it comes to the Geigerverse and the timeline of Geigerverse, we're going to quickly go through this. Just so you have an idea of where Junkler Joe really lands in all of this. Starting in 1776, that is when Redcoat becomes immortal. The Northerner, this is when he begins his hunt. 1864, we have someone called the Monster. This is the year that he is made, the year of 1944. Have to assume that that has something to do with Nazis. 1972, that is when Junkyard Joe comes online. 1997, American Widow X. This is the year that she has her revenge. The first ghost is captured on film in 2026. And in 2030, that is when the unknown war erupts. That is when the story of Geiger begins. And in 2050, that is when Geiger walks across America. So you guys see that while Junkyard Joe, he does have his role throughout this story. And he is well off into the future. He lives for quite some time. But there are so many other characters that are going to be tying into the Geigerverse. 
and I for one am so freaking excited to see what comes next. Geiger knocked it out of the freaking park. Junkyard Joe, at least for its issue number one, knocked it out of the park. We did get a little preview of Redco in previous issues. That seems to be a very promising story. Now, I'll save my, my review, my judgment, for when I read the whole thing. But so far, it looks to be absolutely amazing. So if you guys haven't checked out Geiger, be sure to go do that. And make sure you hit the comic book shops October 5th. Junkyard Joe issue number one will be releasing. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything that has happened with Geiger, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, we have five different tiers from $1 to $50. From loyalty badges to me sending you free comics every single month. This is a great way to not only get perks for supporting the channel, but helping us out in tremendous ways. Now, if you're not able to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.